Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to talk about SAP Central Finance. In this tutorial, I'll be giving you guys an overview and in a way, we will be simplifying the concepts so you get a gist of what it's all about. I wanted to highlight that in this video series, I am referring to Central Finance and SAP S for HANA. Please know that we're talking about the SAP S for HANA version 2020. It's really good to note because there are different versions of central finance and the version you may be dealing with could be different. And definitely when we're talking about versions in SAP, some features do not exist in earlier versions. So that's one thing. I will be creating this video into two parts. I will leave the links down in the description box below as well as the blog post. As an overview, we're going to talk about what central finance is its notable features, deployment options, and then we're going to move on to its architecture. As we go through the series or the two-part video, there will be a discussion on high-level configuration, architecture overview on connection and error monitoring, as well as additional information on central finance for non-SAP systems. Let's start off with what is SAP central finance. So this is a finance deployment option for those who want to consume SAP S4 HANA features or innovations faster. I've highlighted this over here. I also mentioned that I'd like to think of central finance as this master finance system, and it would definitely have the SAP S4 HANA features. It's a finance first solution as mentioned in a couple of central finance videos already um, in YouTube as well as in official SAP conferences. So the features will be focused on finance processes. Moving on to notable features. Again, there are a lot of features that are there for central finance and I've listed some of them. Earlier, we also mentioned that it's a finance for solution and I did refer to it as a master finance system. And if you were to keep that in mind, you'll notice that most of the features or all of the features below talk about centralization and having this one source of truth amidst all of the existing systems in your overall system architecture. First is real-time replication. We're replicating the data from legacy systems to SAP Central Finance, which is a good thing because if you're aware of BW systems or those related to business warehouse or business intelligence, there are cases, especially in ECC, where you have to wait a day after because it's because there will be jobs that are present that will bring over the data to the BW or BI system. In a way, there is this delay in terms of having an up-to-date data, if that makes any sense. So in central finance, we're talking about real time. Once it's posted in the legacy system, it should appear pretty quickly in the central finance system. Next, we have a centralization of finance operations and then central reporting. So this I have highlighted here that uh, when we talk about central reporting, it's a good feature to implement because it will give the business users a unified view of their financials across all the systems, right? So you're bringing data from SAP systems and non-SAP systems into the CFIN system. And so in a way, you do have a unified view. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the source systems are still up and running. We haven't done any drastic changes to it so they're still there next we have central payments and central down payments so if you're talking about an erp source system for example sap uh, one feature that i would like to mention is the behavior of central payments where invoices in the source system will be marked as technically cleared when they are replicated so you can still have invoices in the source system, right? And it will be replicated to central finance. The thing here is that when it's replicated or the invoice is replicated in the CFIN system, you don't need to worry about those invoices in the source system because they will be marked as cleared. 
And this is a good thing to note off because in terms of the clearing and the payment, that can be done in the CFIN system as part of the processes. And it closes off this concern of double work because the invoice was originally posted in the source system or the legacy system and now it's being brought over to CFIN. Next is intercompany reconciliation. So I did mention three processes here that can run on central finance. And if you guys are familiar with ICR, then it's also catered there. I did mention that document splitting is covered. Next up, we're going to talk about central finance landscape architecture. To get you guys started on that, please know that there are three main systems. We have the source system the SAP Landscape Transformation Server, as well as the target system, which is definitely your SAP S4 HANA instance or your central finance system. I have created a diagram over here. So you'll notice that we still have uh, the different source systems involved, wh whether they may be non-SAP or SAP. And we're bringing over the data to SAP Central Finance. We have such a thing as SAP SLT. We have SAP MDG, which is for Master Data Governance, and AIF for Application Interface Framework, which is used for error handling. Uh, there are a lot of things involved in central finance in terms of the data flow or what happens. But for now, we can focus on the highlighted parts of this diagram. I mentioned here that the source systems are highlighted in blue over here, and these are where main business processes run and where FICO docs are posted. So I did mention the example previously where there is an invoice that was posted in the source system. Next is SLT or the SAP Landscape Transformation Server. This is highlighted in yellow. So when we bring the data over to central finance, SLT is definitely involved because that is what reads and replicates the data to central finance. Next would be the target system, which is your central finance system. It's highlighted in green. Uh, it's this whole chunk over here. And it's basically where your FICO docs are reposted. For MDG or Master Data Governance, within this SAP Central Finance instance, there could be an MDG that's sitting on top, which handles the business mapping and also the centralization of master data processes. This is one example of how the MDG can work alongside Central Finance. Next up is Application Interface Framework or AIF. It's over here, highlighted in orange. This is going to be your error handling tool. Definitely when you're replicating data to the central finance system, you want to be able to monitor and manage these postings, these documents, and we want to make sure that everything is seamless at that point. So AIF is there to cover your error handling or monitoring concerns. I have added some screenshots below. So you'll see that for SLT, I have an example screenshot over here. There are configurations involved when it comes to the SLT. And when you click on the Expert Functions tab, you should see a lot of available configurations that involve accessing the tables, creating the database triggers, so on and so forth. When it comes to Master Data Governance, we do have a sample screenshot over here. So this is just me performing a key mapping maintenance where you specify the vendor number in the source system compared to the CFIN system. So there's this sort of mapping involved so that CFIN is aware of what vendor counterpart exists in CFIN. Lastly, for AIF, I do have a couple of screenshots and this shows you that Error handling or monitoring is done here. There are several categories involved, accounting documents, controlling documents, cost objects, profit center accounting, project system, master data, so on and so forth. And if you choose cost object replication, for example, and click on the number over here, 
or the errors, you should see or you will be able to drill down the list of documents or data that is replicated to central finance. Here is a screenshot of when you click any of those and you should see the exact uh, document details that you're dealing with. Next up, we have deployment options, which is going to be the last topic or subtopic for this discussion. Earlier, we talked about three main systems. So remember that we have the source system, the target system, as well as SLT. And because of that, we do have several deployment options available for them. And of course, the related components. We will not talk about the versioning and in-depth technicalities of each, but below would serve as a high-level overview of the options available. So here, let's start off with central finance. Um, you do have the option to upgrade and migrate, upgrade, migrate, and consolidate, as well as replicate to central finance, which is to leave the legacy systems as is and optionally reduce the number of instances over time. So it's something to take note of, especially if you're using central finance as a stepping stone before completely moving to the cloud or something like that. Next is SAP MDG. This is optional for central finance, but it's, it is pretty good for making sure that your master data is clean. There is a fixed process. There is a centralized master data hub. So if this will be availed, uh, it can be deployed as a separate standalone master data hub. Another option is to deploy it on top of SAP S4 HANA, which is the scenario that we have for this tutorial. Lastly, we have SLT. So for the deployment option, you can deploy it as an add-on to any SAP source system. And this can also be deployed on a separate host. This is the recommended. In this case, for this tutorial, we will be taking the consideration or the scenario wherein it's added as an add-on to our central finance system. Before I close this video, I wanted to also add some information. When it comes to central finance, it's designed for a quick deployment approach. It also caters to an iterative or accelerated rollout. So if you're familiar with deployment waves where you have wave one, two, three, four, uh, that is possible or realistic with central finance. And the customers do have the option to choose what and when they want to roll out. I added an example here that there is no fixed order when it comes to choosing what is rolled out first. So if you have a number of non-SAP systems, you have a number of SAP systems. When it comes to the decision making, the customers can decide which comes first depending on their prioritization. So it doesn't matter if uh, you start with non-SAP first or SAP. With that being said, I think we're done with this part one of the video. In the next session, we will talk about the following topics and yeah, I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps.